G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well, hasn't the market just decided to show everyone that nobody knows exactly what is going to go on? We're all probably thinking Bitcoin's going to go up, it's just part of the, you know, the trend, and I still think that kind of is true, but we are having a bit of a, tra a retracement. And look, there's something I want to have a look at in the charts very shortly that are probably going to put things in a bit of perspective. It is absolutely possible, and I'd say maybe even likely, that we're going to have a bearish month. Maybe April is not going to be uh, quite so good. And maybe, look, even the rest of March actually might be bearish. And again, when we get to the charts, I'll show you what I mean. But let's have a look at what we're seeing uh, on the market at the moment. So we're down, we dropped under that $1.8 trillion level, getting back down to $1.7 trillion. It really is just very volatile at the moment. And... This is my opinion, and again, never financial advice, just my opinion. This is just the market trying to wipe out the weak hands. That's literally all it is. I don't think we're going to have anything too bearish. Look, we could have a correction go down into the 40K sort of range. I doubt it's going down to the low 40K range, but who knows. But I'm just saying this is just the volatility that happens in cryptocurrency, and it really is because things have been so bullish. That is why now it's going to get very, very volatile. I don't think this is the end of the run at all. I think we have uh, quite a ways to go before we get to the top. But this really is bigger players trying to shake out the weak hands. And the strong hands, they're just simply going to hold, in my personal opinion. But let's have a look. All right, BTC dominance down to 58%. ETH dominance 112 Gas slowly rising. Again, is that people jumping in and out of stable coins or trying to get into altcoins? It's really, really hard to know. Uh, for me at the moment, I'm not really doing anything. I'll dollar cost average into the things I'm happy to, uh, but I'm not making sort of any big plays. I'm not selling off majorly, uh, and I'm not deploying cash majorly at the moment either. All right, pretty red from what we can see, but, you know, there's tinges of green in there. I mean, XRP, <laughs> of all things, you know, is sort of, making a bit of a run but look based on previous history xrp was always one of the last things to run and run the harder so is history repeating itself at the moment i'm not really sure we'll have to wait and see all right has anything really pumped in the last 24 hours has there been any big moves all right there has dent theta network doing well iota uh are we we've been uh, seeing that sort of move for a little while XRP, Bitcoin SV, <laughs> Bitmax token, Uniswap, Pancake. So there's definitely some movers in there. But again, really, it's over 15% in 24 hours that I consider to be a good move. Anything under is just kind of all right. So R weaves pretty close and XRP not too far off. Everything else is pretty stock standard. But I mean, look at Dent in seven days, you know, near 300, 266%, so not quite 300 but it's made you know nearly 60% of that in the last 24 hours. What about losses? We know there's been some losses. We can tell because the market's down 4.9%. All right, any big losses? Sire coin, engine coin. Well, engine was always going to have a pullback. It, you know, nothing can pump that hard and not come back. This is what they all do. Uh, v chain having a bit of a pullback. But look, nothing kind of too bad there. I mean, even engine coin down 12.7% uh, in 24 hours and 22% over the last seven days, but it nearly 10 x in a matter of sort of a month. So I would say it's going to come back substantially. It's at $2 right now. Let's go in. Let's have a look at Engine Coin. Let's see what it's done. How? There we go. In the last month, it went up near 300%. So basically 4 x so I would say it's pretty safe to say it'll probably come down to near half of the price that it was at. So, all right, let's go 30 days. This was its peak, so it made it to $2.98. I wouldn't be surprised if you see it come down to around about $1.50-ish. Thereabouts, not exactly, but I would say kind of somewhere, yeah, down around about here. It's either going to find uh, support at this old kind of resistance or it's likely going to come down here and then start to found some, find some support around about sort of the dollar sixty three range. That's what I would be thinking, just looking at it. And again, I don't think this is the end because none of these projects are selling off like it is a bear market. They're just selling off 
like people are taking profits. <laughs> That's literally all it is. So for me, my personal experience, nothing to sort of worry about. Now, I've got some Bitcoin charts. All right. This is very, very interesting. So we can see it peaks out and then it sells off for a while. Peaks out again, sells off for a while. Peaks off, sells off for a while. Now we can see, look at this. It's come down and hit the bottom of this resistance line. Can it go lower? Absolutely it can. Will it? I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see it. It's still early sort of in the week. Like, yeah, it's hard to imagine that the cycle is over yet based on the way things are playing out. When the market cycle is over, I mean, these red candles, they are just really, really big. There's no really big red candles at the moment. It's all just kind of traveling sideways. Is it going down a little bit? Yep. Could it absolutely come down and sort of test, you know, retest these levels? Yeah, and that's probably what I'd sort of think that it's going to come down to somewhere in and around here and maybe retest these levels. Because, you know, we can put this all as just fluctuation and so it could possibly do this for a while before we finally start to make our next move upwards this is absolutely quite possible and again we're looking at on the daily at the moment so of course the daily is going to be kind of all over the place this is what I found interesting this chart so here we now have the monthly charts one two three four five six monthly green candles not a red in there the last one was a little while ago this is the peak of the cycle in 2017 one two three red one two three four five red so we are due for a red month i actually think that's most likely what is going to happen does it mean that it's over? No, I don't think it mean, means that it's over. I think there's definitely more to go because we didn't have you know, the full institutional adoption and everything and everyone getting into the space back then. This was really just retail based, people in the crypto space. So yes, I do think it's quite likely. Not guaranteed though, that we could still have much, much more upside, but I do think it's quite likely that we might have a red month and we might even finish March in the red it may kind of pull back and get down to around about here so then all of a sudden it becomes red 43 44,000 completely possible before we then make our next leg up i just think it's unlikely that we're going to go into seven eight and nine you know green candle months so bullish months without some kind of red you can see you know you just go back through history it, it's never done that at least since 2015 anyway before that it may have one two three four red one red one two three one two red one two three four indecision five a little bit of indecision again six so but there was some red in there again you, you're just not finding that many uh bullish candles one two three four five this was the closest we got and then we had again it was a red month but just a, a spinning top so an indecision month I do think that's quite possible. What we're going to see here is by the end of this month, this may sort of turn red and be an indecision candle, or maybe April is going to be uh, a bearish sort of month. Could be completely wrong. It's so hard to know. No one absolutely knows for sure, but we've had such a good run here. It's probably to be expected that, look, we might even have a couple of bearish sort of months. So again, maybe we are going to come back down and you know retest something. Oh, I don't think it's going to go that low, but something around about here, maybe the thirty, forty thousand dollar level. It's hard to see on the monthly because they're so big of the retests. But I think here, yeah, I think you know coming back down and sort of retesting somewhere around about sort of here, so forty five ish, forty. Yeah, $6,000 level, definitely possible. And it may sort of take some time as well. This could be, uh, whoops, let's get rid of that. Move, that was meant to be there. It is quite possible that we see something like this, that we've just kind of hit a top. That 60000 it was, you know, quite a mark. And maybe we have to go into a bit of a, not a bearish, well, yeah, a, no, not a bearish trend, 
but just uh, some you know consolidation. So really, for me, this is what I think might happen. No guarantees in life, we're just waiting to see. And look, we've got some interesting stories. And some of it might back up, you know, some of the things that we're seeing in the market. So first of all, right, streaming tokens surge as Bitcoin price drops to the $54,000 support level. So this is where there is support. Tokens related to gaming, video and music streaming rallied to new highs, even as Bitcoin price pulled back to the 54,000 support. So that's where it is. It's at the 54,000 support range, a little bit under now. But again, that's, you know, we're talking the minutes here that could easily come back uh, and correct itself. Now, what we can see here is Audius, a music streaming platform has already already has also rallied strongly over the past month as its price increased from 35 cents to two dollars five on march 16th i've been hearing some really good things about audius this is something i want to get into it's just not available uh on the exchange that i've been using uh, at least since the last time i've looked and because it's gone to two dollars five i'll really be waiting for quite a correction and particularly if bitcoin's going to correct then a lot of these altcoins are going to correct as well but audius is something i am very very interested in all right so a hundred thousand investors uh deluge casper labs token sale with most expected to miss out so there's been a bit of hype around this i personally haven't uh you know, got invested. I, I don't do too many token sales in all fairness because there's just been so many rug pulls and things like that. I'd rather just invest in things that, you know, have a little bit of history behind them and, you know, they haven't been, you know, sort of fly by overnight sort of things. So more than 100,000 investors are trying to participate in Casper Labs offering on CoinList, but only about 12,000 are likely to secure tokens. So that really is not many people at all that are going to get in. Yeah. 100,000 people trying to get in and maybe only 12,000 are going to get in there. Uh, good luck to anyone who's part of those 12,000. Probably going to be uh, people that are, you know, putting more money in. I think the, excuse me, the small time investors are really going to struggle to get into this. Could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. Now, this is the one that I was talking about. So institutional crypto managers report record uh, assets under management despite US inflows plummeting. So institutional inflows have declined 59% this past week. And it's just because it's an all-time high. They will be looking to buy in should it go, you know, right down into the 40,000s. The dip will be bought. I'm quite sure of that. It's just where their kind of uh, point to buy in, uh, where their happy point is that we're all waiting for, you know. Is it maybe now 54,000? But we can see it's still going down, 53,600. So maybe it's not fi till 50,000 that uh, um, institutional buyers are happy to get back in. Maybe it's 48,000, maybe it's, maybe it's 45,000. We'll have to wait and see. But I definitely don't think it's over. I think we could definitely see a bearish trend for possibly a month at the very least, if not maybe two. But look, again, maybe they just simply buy the dip once it hits 50,000 and that's it. That's what we're waiting to see. So according to Digital Asset Investment Manager, CoinShares, institutional demand in the US has declined slightly. However, European funds are still buying. The data indicates a significant de decline in institutional demand with inflows down nearly 60% from the previous week, which recorded 242 million. So again, we've only got a very small amount of institutions here, full stop, and I'm guessing they think that 60,000 uh, it's too high a price. They don't want to buy in at 60000 So they've eased off. Uh, they're now waiting to buy in at cheaper prices. And it's got the new people who, again, probably bought at 58000 near 60000 You know, the new money is what I like to call it. You know, some people refer to it as the dumb money. I don't like that. But the new money, they just panic. They buy something at 58000 They see it at 53000 And they're just like, I'm out. Because as we can see, it's still going lower here uh, on... What's this? This is the Coinbase one, so it's already down at 53,000 and getting lower. But that is what I believe is happening at the moment. The new money is just getting shaken out. I'm not selling anything. Uh, and when I do sell, I'm, I'm more than happy to let you know. I think this is just going to be a market correction, nothing more. Now, here's a reason why I don't think it's over. So the, coin, the New York Coinbase Gemini Cryptocurrency Exchange has added seven new tokens to its platform. And there's a clear focus on DeFi and NFT booms. If it was so bearish, would they be adding so many tokens? I don't think they would be. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they're going to add new tokens, whether it's a bull market or a bear market, but to suddenly add seven more tokens? Nah. In one go, I just don't see it. Today's new additions include DeFi-related tokens for 1inch, Bancor, Blockchain Infrastructure Token Scale, The Graph, Loopring, and gaming-centric tokens like Engine and the Sandbox uh, in-game sand currency. So this isn't something that usually happens in a bear market. This is still bullish. They obviously see uh, massive upside, and they have been uh, quite vocal about NFTs and things like that, and DeFi as well. Now, last but not least, again, minds are changing, but we need to be careful with this and take this with a grain of salt. Because he's saying he predicts it to go to Bitcoin, he probably bought in a little while ago and he's just trying to pump it so his own bags uh, can be increased. And look, that's kind of the same with everyone. Like, I'm biased. I bought Bitcoin and I bought it back at 8400 And I got some cheaper, but generally sort of 7400 8400 was roughly the price where I got into my major position in Bitcoin. I've still scaled into it. I haven't been doing that for a while. But should Bitcoin get down into the $40,000 range, I will be starting to buy more Bitcoin at that price. And now that I've said it, it'll get down to 50000 and won't go uh, a dollar lower, so I won't buy any. But here we can see John Bellafort, the author and former stockbroker known as the Wolf of Wall Street. Yes, the guy from... Uh, the movie, I mean, he wasn't in the movie, but it was about his life, has changed his previous critical stance on Bitcoin, uh, predicting the cryptocurrency's price will go on to hit 100000 I think it'll do that as well. I think it'll go over. Bellafort told Fortune in an interview he believes Bitcoin holds advantages over stocks, such as its limited supply, which could see the cryptocurrency reach the $100,000 level. I think it's going to do that as well. Like I said, I think this is just a market shakeout. The big boys, you know, they're trying to kill everyone who's going long with leverage, which plenty of people are trying to do. And then when everyone gets a bit scared, then they'll go long and then they'll go short. And that's literally just the way the game is played. And it is the big exchanges that do this as well. Don't think for a minute that the big exchanges, I was circling Jordan Bellafort, he's not one of them. But the, the exchanges themselves, they can see when everyone's going long and they short the market. They've got quite a lot of Bitcoin. So they can sell off you know, more or less. Uh, a lot of the exchanges, well, not a lot of the exchanges, but a few of the exchanges anyway, they're also into mining, like they're, they're mining it themselves. So, you know, they're making money whether it goes up or down, but they do like to counter trade, counter trade to make more money. So if everyone's going long, they're going to go short and sell the crap out of it because they're going to sell uh, their Bitcoin. People are going to buy it but then they're going to make more Bitcoin on the way going down as well. So, yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged sword and we need to be very careful. So for me, I'm dollar cost averaging at the moment, but I'm not making any big moves. I'm not, you know, I've got a reasonable amount of cash sitting on the side. I'm not, you know, going, right, now's the time for me to just jump in and buy. No, I need to see something uh, happen. It needs to kind of, you know, make a decision one way or the other. If it's just going to go sideways... I'll do my dollar cost averaging, you know, on my weekly fortnightly pays. I'll put a little bit of money in. But the cash I have sitting on the side is either for we have a good correction and I see a bottoming pattern or it just simply waits until the bear market, the next bear market. That's when I'll deploy that cash that I have sitting on the side. I've taken some profits, only 10% of what I had uh, quite some time ago. And I've already made that money back with the market going up. So again, if we see a decent correction, which you know is completely normal in a bull market, and we haven't had a red month for six months now, so really a red month should be coming sometime soon, and that would just be perfectly normal. If I see that, and again, that would be something like Bitcoin getting down into the 40,000s and definitely the 30,000s, uh, I would absolutely buy that. I think it's unlikely we get into the $30,000 range, not impossible, I just think it's unlikely. I think there'd be too much buying pressure. I really do think kind of the 46 ish thousand dollar mark, $48,000 mark, if Bitcoin somehow manages to push down to those levels, it will get bought up in an absolute heartbeat. That's my personal opinion. That's what I think will happen. All right, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is just a very small correction and at least on the monthly chart, we're just going to continue to go up or do you think it's definitely 
at least highly likely that if not March, but possibly April is going to be a bearish month because we've just had so much bullish months one after the other. Love to know your thoughts down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that game train, congratulations to you. You're doing very well. And I'll see you next time.